but coming uh, to the to the main item that's the water crisis uh, and just go ahead please uh, and there I have been uh, a few months ago in uh, Phuket in Thailand there was a interesting conference on uh, Mekong to Rio and this means uh, Mekong to Rio what is the input of great river basins to the conference in Rio I have been discussing this yesterday with you Stuart and that was very interesting for me because many people in the water sector have been afraid that Rio will bring nothing for the water sector but you told me there is a success and the success is not so much on the political level it's more on the uh, company and then the stakeholder level so I am glad. Now what is the problem water and health for me water supply sanitation hazards uh, like floods and urbanization so this is the water crisis for the future and it's already ongoing and the next one is water and energy if you are thinking about this great idea of renewable energy and now with the great idea of renewable energy they are asking for hydropower and for me coming from the water sector and river sector hydropower is uh, more or less not such an ideal renewable energy it changes the habitats it changes food possibility it changes a lot so we have to be very careful in this situation coming from climate change of course climate change had a great influence in this uh, water and food security uh, taking into account the population growth rate and taking into account where in which countries in which regions, regions we have the most rising situation in the growth rate and seeing that these regions are already today faced with water scarcity we have there in my sense a great uh, challenge in the sense of crisis and it was uh, very interesting in the in the Mekong uh, conference the strategic uh, message was this so-called nexus approach this nexus approach is a new word for getting together on the same level that means uh, in the water framework directive you have the the opportunity the, the, it is called that you should uh, influence with the water policy you should come to the other policies but you, the other policies like agricultural policies have to take care of the water policy this is the main idea in the framework directive and the nexus approach says no we have to get in more contact on the same level on the same level water policy as well as environmental policy as well as industrial policy have to be on the same level together on one on one uh, table and that's not only the sectors it's all the actors and this is what you mentioned already taking everybody on board and then we can uh, we can develop new solutions for the future now I'm coming to the example of the venue but not in the moment we have regulatory press perspectives and there I try to find out the different levels we have a great great level and uh, over the whole world this is UN level uh, this UN level gives us several conventions you know these uh, resolutions and you have actions as well as support and financing models you have for instance transboundary river conventions as it is the ICPDR based on an UNECE convention so there is uh, the the overall possibility for these uh, regulatory perspectives we are using in a great field the EU level for instance for the directives it was already mentioned the framework directive but it's also nowadays the flood directive it's the nitrate directive it's the urban wastewater directive and uh, with this uh, these are all regulatory instruments but uh, nevertheless it is not only the possibility to develop integrated water management with uh, 
acts and laws. You have also taken into account a certain kind of finance support and uh, possibilities uh, for other supports. Even, even the Danube uh, region has a great support by the World Bank, has got a great support by World Bank, by GF, by the EU, FARA and so on. And that was not only a regulatory perspective, this was, a, let me say, a perspective to get things running. Uh, regional level, there are conventions, uh, treaties, uh, contracts, etc. And on the national level, we have mainly the regulations uh, and acts on water. Uh, now coming to the Danube, and uh, you see the Danube is a quite good example because uh, the Danube is the most international river we have on the world. Phil mentioned already 19 countries. We have 81 million inhabitants. Uh, it, is, it is the European lifeline, and you are now sitting in this European lifeline and see coming the water from the Black Woods uh, going to the mouth of the Black Sea. A fantastic river basin, a fantastic river, and my heart is within this standing. So let's go. <laughs> Phil mentioned already that it was uh, signed in the June of uh, 94. The, the uh, convention went into force 98. And since that time, uh, we are acting in Vienna with a, with a secretariat in Vienna. And uh, the main uh, aims uh, are the protection of water and, and together with, at that time, already ecological resources the sustainable use of water in the whole basin, that means not only, and this is a difference to other commissions. Many commissions are only covering the straight line of the river. The Danube Convention, Protection Convention, is covering the whole basin. So not only the surface water bodies, also the groundwater bodies. And uh, therefore, sustainable use means also the use of groundwater, the use of, of uh, springs, and so on. Reduce inputs of nutrients and hazardous substances, uh, especially in the view of the Black Sea and the eutrophication of the Black Sea. The control of floods, that's new, and ice hazards, it's already mentioned in the convention, but there we got the great input by the last floods, 2002 and so on, especially in Romania and Bulgaria, and to strengthen international cooperation. Here you see the contracting parties. It was already mentioned, uh, 14 countries and the EU, by the EU, Phil told you already. Let's go ahead because I'm looking to the timetable. <laughs> for me, one great momentum for the success of the ICPDR in implementing the convention is that we have on board observers. The observers, one, one momentum is that the observers have to take care not only for one country so, so that they should be organized for more countries to have a responsible voice. And you see we have, I don't know the number exactly, but we have on board not only uh, environmental engaged uh, NGOs like WWF, we have also on board the, the Tourism Commission, we have the uh, <coughs> water suppliers, the union, we have, uh, for instance, uh, the Angling Association, we have on board the Power Association, so there we have the, the knowledge, let me say, the knowledge of all these uh, observers in our decision-making process, and we can hear what's their problem. Of course, they are, um, they are not possible to take part in the decision that itself, but they are advising us and they are giving us their knowledge. And this is also in connection now with the private companies. It was, it was already said that uh, we need to pay this 
getting together of the actors. We in the Danube, we have the possibility, and this was launched by Phil and the Secretariat, the equation of business friends of the Danube. There we have a cooperation, a very deep cooperation with, for instance, uh, Coca-Cola, with for, oh, Coca-Cola, always Coca-Cola. <laughs> With, for instance, Borealis, today we signed an uh, MOU with, uh, with uh, GE. So this gives us possibility to go far beyond the real, uh, the only text of the convention. This gives us possibility to go and uh, find this awareness raising. For instance, with Coca-Cola, there was developed a Danube box. This Danube box is the teaching material for schools, for uh, children, let's say young people between, let's say, 13 and, and 17 years old. So in my sense, we have to go to the young people to take their, their knowledge and their awareness to bring this up. And we are, oh, look at me, I'm the white hair and I'm the senior in this room. So you cannot change me anymore. But with our knowledge, we have to change the youth coming up for our society, taking care of the environment. Next one, please. <coughs> Primarily, what are the main tasks? This is uh, the uh, Danube River Protection Convention we have to implement. Uh, we have to implement the Water Framework Directive, other directives. I will not be too long. What is, for me, uh, Essential is that there was an agreement under all the environmental ministers of all Danubian countries to implement European water acts. So uh, there is not a difference, for instance, between Moldova and Romania. Romania is a member of uh, the EU, Moldova is not in the EU, but both countries are following the water act of the European Union. That takes for us the possibility to follow with the river basin management plan in full uh, accordance with the framework directive. A, range, uh, a wide range of activities follows this. Uh, this is on the next two slides. You see this is the, the bringing up the transnational monitoring network that was very early. An accident emergency and warning system, modeling of nutrient pollution loads, especially looking to the Black Sea, maintenance of mission directories and GIS data management, definition of measures to fight hydromorphological alterations. Great uh, problem is organic and nutrient pollution as well as hazardous substances, protection of habitats, and so on. Next one, please. <coughs> Dialogue with representatives from sectors affecting water, such as hydropower, navigation, or agriculture. This is today a challenge, and that's not an easy challenge because there, hydropower, I mentioned already, agriculture is a, a problem, let's say, especially to groundwater and to nutrients, and it's not so easy to have there a new awareness under the farmers and the organizations from the farmers. I would say the farmers themselves, they are more flexible than their organizations. Uh, however, collaboration in Danube sub-basins such as the Tisa, Brut, Sava, or Danube Delta, exchange with other river commissions such as Oras Orasicom that was already mentioned by Phil, uh, and collaboration with private companies within these business friends of the Danube. Next one, please. So <clears throat> what I would like also to bring on the table is that the ICPDR is not the body who is responsible to implement all these measures in the contracting party countries. The, the responsibility for this is at the level of the countries. We in the ICBDR are, a, let me say, a leading and uh, cooperating and uh, uh, coordinating body to help, to help to focus on the main items of the legislation that end on the decisions of the, of the ICBDR itself, but following is uh, all done by the countries themselves. So 
we had a small, very small <coughs> secretariat. Phil, we had about nine or uh, ten uh, uh, people in the staff. And uh, if you compare this, for instance, with other uh, commissions, the Mekong was mentioned, there you have 160. But the work is done by experts and expert groups, and the experts are coming from the contracting parties, that means from the uh, countries. And this also, for me, is uh, the way how to have success and how to have the, the identification of the countries with the results we are bringing on the table. So their own experts have agreed to the regulations and therefore they are identifying themselves with these regulations and they are fulfilling it. This is, I think, one important step. Competent authority in the sense of water framework directive, so we have to report to Brussels and uh, from Brussels, we have to spread it again to the countries. Coordinating, not implementing, I told you already, and we are the forum uh, also. And this is now uh, together, let me say, with other actors, we have the possibility to develop other projects like the Czech Pollution Reduction Program. We are cooperating now with the Danish strategy. That's a very important field, hopefully for the future for the next financing period. <coughs> the urgent program is on the table. Very much engagement, climate change, adaptation, and so on. Budget and financial rules, I leave now. You see, we have in the, in the commission a very small budget. So the budget for the implementation has to be carried out by all the contracting parties again. The budget within the secretary for the administrative job is really a small one. We have again with this cooperation with the World Bank, with Jeff, with Coca-Cola, with other friends, uh, business friends of the Danube, we have the possibility for projects outside the administrative uh, jobs and there we are launching for instance, uh, as I told you already, this Danube box or other projects of the Danube Day or for instance, uh, there are a lot of other projects. So, next one, please. We, I already told you where we are now, uh, confronted with uh, challenges. This is, for instance, the, the implementation of the drugs directly for the whole Danube <laughs> Basin. <coughs> Not so easy because you have several different experiences in all these countries and we have to put on board the experiences, the mapping, put it together and follow a general line. Next one, please, uh, guiding principles on hydropower development. Uh, we are trying to find uh, an agreed paper between the hydropower people and the, let me say, environmental engaged people to find the way how we can balance the interests of uh, environmental protection and renewable energy. This is not an easy job. We are standing sometimes in a very confronting situation, but hopefully we try to find a, a new uh, situation. Next one is the, the Agriculture and land use. I already uh, spoke about this. Next one, please. We have uh, now uh, in preparation a, a, a study about the climate change situation in within the basin. There are different developments uh, in the modeling for the basin. It's clear, but in, within such a large basin, you have different situations, and we find. We will we try to find some uh, ideas how we can uh, move this adaptation down to regions. Next one, please. Uh, I already mentioned this Daniel strategy where we where we are trying to go on board with what the, the EU and all these uh, EU countries are uh, planning in in the infrastructure in. 
other projects that we will bring in our results there. You see the, the ICBDR has a, a data basis which is really, really very deep and great, especially in the field of water management, quality criteria, and so on. And uh, we are thinking it's not necessary to uh, to a thing then to what means a thing invent discover. Discover. discover the wheel once more so we have one wheel and we should use this wheel <laughs> and uh, therefore for us it's very very important to get a good contact with this uh, uh, development within the Daniel Stevens <laughs> next one and here I'm coming now to the today's uh, main item, this is the cooperation between business, governments, organizations, and uh, I think, uh, and I'm thankful for the invitation today, I think the Danube uh, is on a good way in this sector. We are all the time, uh, we are willing to share our experiences, and I hope within the discussion, we can start already with the sharing of the experiences. Thank you so much.